Okay, so I thought I would take a break from making my albums for the Ultimate DIY Scrapbook printable template and make a new cover for my um, book that I made to hold all of the cutoff pieces when I'm working on a project. And I asked you guys to give me some names for that and I've decided on a name. Scrapper Keeper. I think it's awesome. Scrapper Keeper. Um, it was named by Creative Pizzazz. Scrapper Keeper. Thank you, Creative Pizzazz. Um, so what I'm going to do is I decided uh, I've been missing my uh, mixed media stuff, so I'm, I'm going to make a mixed media cover. And I'm going to show you guys how I did that. And I'm also going to show you how I make these uh, sleeves with the fuse tool from We Are Memory Keepers and I'm also going to show you, um, I'm not going to show you how I did it, but I sewed some too so I wanted you to see that even if you don't have that fuse tool you can still make uh, these things. So what I did was I took these uh, job tickets, I get mine at Staples, they're heavy duty, they're 9 by 12 and I just laid one down onto a piece of mixed media paper, traced it out and cut it out. And this is the mixed media paper that I use. It's from Strathmore mixed media paper. And uh, I get mine at Hobby Lobby. I usually get them at 50% off, so, or 40% off. I don't know if it's ever 50%, but. So I'm using this paper, mixed media paper. And also, I thought it would be fun to use some doodle flowers. So what I'm gonna do is, I, um, I'm going to have both of these. I'm going to have the plain and these um, painted flowers. I'm going to give them to you free. They're going to be on my Facebook page. So all you have to do, I'll put a link below to that um, post, hopefully, if I do it right. But all you have to do is like double click on the picture and then right click on the picture and then save as and then save it wherever you want to in your computer. Um, but it'll just be these two things, and they're hand drawn. I draw, I drew them myself, and then um, I painted them, um, and I thought it would be fun. So I'm going to use these, and I'm also going to be using some of my India ink spray in brown. I'll link the video to how I made these uh, below. And then let's see what else. Um, I think that's it for right now. So first, I'm going to get started on the cover itself. So I'm going to get some stuff and be right back. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm just going to start off by uh, changing the, this white to a color. You could like, if you wanted to use stencils or anything like that, but I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to keep the background simple because I'm going to put those flowers over top of it, which I think it'll be really pretty. So this is my hand, uh, homemade uh, India ink spray. Again, I'll link that below and I'm just going to spray. I need to be careful. I still have other projects on my table here. And then I'm also going to spray it with some water. So what I want it to do is I want it to like spread out and move around. <clears throat> you guys have seen me do this before. I'm going to add some more color. <clears throat> and then I'm going to hit it with my heat tool and I'm going to move the color around. I'm just going to blot some of the extra water out because I'm going to flip it or off. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing to the back side. Just like this. And you can also start off by spraying with the water first if you want to. Let's do it that way just because. And then coming back with your... You know, I'm using India ink because it's permanent, and I'm going to be putting stuff on top of it, but you could use any sort of spray, Primo sprays or um, Lindy's Stamp Gang spray, any of those. Um, tatter, what was it? Tattered Angels? Uh, Glimmer Mist? Do they still make those? I bet they do. Marion Smith sprays. Um, you, can, you can use any of those. Your homemade acrylic paint sprays. Just any of that stuff. You can use it like this. Okay, so I got my background all dried up. Um, 
and both sides and ready to go. I just wanted to point out too that today's a snow day and my dogs are going crazy and my son's home and my husband came home from work. So if it gets loud, I'm sorry. I Hopefully I'll cut it out, but maybe I won't be able to. So I'm just apologizing right now. So, okay. So again, these are going to be on my Facebook page. They're going to be free. Um, just double click on it, then right click on it and then save picture as wherever you want to save it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out and then I'm going to place them on here using a glue stick. You can use whatever medium you want. You can use um, a multi matte medium by Ranger. You can use, uh, what else could you use? Uh, glue and seal, which I hear they've uh, discontinued. You can use PVA glue, anything you want. So I'm just going to, where's my scissors? I'm just going to show you how I'm going to cut mine out. I've already cut um, a couple sheets of these out, and I'm going to only use the uh, colored ones right now. Let's see, there's kids outside playing in the snow, and she's just not having it. Um, but I'm only going to use the colored ones right now. Uh, maybe in another video, I'll show you some different ideas for these and for the uh, plain ones, because you can print these out on other stuff, and you can watercolor, color pencil, anything you want on them. So. I'm just going to leave a border all the way around mine. You can cut right straight up to that black line if you want to. Um, and, I, and for what I'm doing, I don't feel like it needs to be perfect or anything. So even if I do get close to that black line or take all the white off, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me a bit. Um, but all the flowers, there are several different sizes. And they're really cool. This is just regular paper. Well, no. Yeah, this is just regular paper that I put... Uh, this is a laser print, not an not a inkjet. Not that I don't, I don't think it'll matter. I'm not really sure. Maybe that'll be one of the things I'll do in another video experiment because I do have an inkjet too. It just really depends on what you're going to do with it. So I'm just going to cut this out. See, I'm not even doing it evenly, but that's okay. I think the end effect will be really cool either way. So, see, and you can't really, I mean, you can, there's a white border, but you can't hardly tell. So, it's really cool. So, I'm going to cut a bunch of these out and I'll be right back. All right, I ended up print it off three times and cutting all three sheets out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with my biggest flowers and I'm using a Yoohoo glue stick. Um, I think it just holds better. You can use whatever glue stick you have because I am going to seal it. I might not be using I'm almost out. Of, am I almost out? No. That's it. Well, I am almost out. Whoops. Well, hopefully I have enough to finish this project. <laughs> all right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue stick on all the back side here. This uh, Yoohoo stick sure is sticky. And then I am going to place it down and then I'm going to wrap it around. So let me get a card real quick. So I'm first I'm going to take a, a just an old card. I'm going to press it down on one side then I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to press it down on the other. Just, oops, I didn't get glue stick right there. Just like that. So I'm going to be doing both sides at one time. Um, and then I'm going to do another big one. And you don't have to use my flowers. You don't have to get them off, the, off of Facebook. You can draw your own flowers if you want to use this technique because I think it's really cool. Um, let's see. I kind of want maybe one down here. Like this, maybe. And then I will. I'm going to flip it over and wrap it around to the back side.
And so I like to do things in threes. Maybe I'll stick one. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll stick one up there. Which is why I cut three sheets out because it may, I may use them all, I may not. But I think that's all I'm going to need for both the front and the back. So my glue stick doesn't like to stand. Let's see. And then flip it up. I might have to trim a little bit off there. Depends on how far it wants to. Oh, no. Nope. It worked out. Went right to the edge. So you just want to give it a good press. So now I've got my three largest flowers. So then I'm going to go to my next largest flower, which is this pretty green. And I'm just going to try to figure out where I might want them. To try to keep, if I go something like this. Yeah. Okay, so I've got all three sheets of flowers that I cut out, and I've got them glue sticked on, glue sticked on, glue stuck on, glue, st whatever. <laughs> I've got them on. So now I want to put this scrapper keeper word on there, and I think I'm going to put it um, on some black cardstock. Let me grab it. Okay, I got me a couple sheets of black cardstock, and I think what I want to do is. I just want to tear the word out, make it kind of scrappy <laughs> look. <laughs> I'm going to get fairly close, I think. I don't want it to be too big. I want you to be able to see the flowers still. There's one, and then here's the other one. Again, thank you, thank you, Creative Pizzazz. I hope I'm saying that right. I like the name, Scrapper Keeper. I think it's perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I think I'm going to, first I'm going to distress it a little bit. I'm just going to use some archival ink and coffee by Ranger, and I think I'm just going to just make it look to where it's not so stark white looking. Even scrappier. <laughs> Is scrappier a word? I think it could be. I just printed this off again on plain old white uh, printer paper. So I think I'm going to tear the black too. So I think I'm going to give myself some room. I'm going to glue stick it down. I had to get another glue stick, by the way. I did. That was out of glue. So I'm just going to apply this down, give myself room to tear. Put this one on another sheet. Stick 
that down. And instead of using the ruler this time, I was just going to use my hands, I think. Let's start by the edge here on the one side. So I'm just going to tear it. Tear it off for... Whoa, don't get too close. Just for it to have like a border so it'll stand out a little bit from my flowers. So it'll look kind of like this. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, I'm going to tear these up. Okay, I think before I attach these down, I'm going to give them a real quick um, coat of Ranger Matte Multimedium because I think this black cardstock will, I think the Matte Multimedium will lift that color and I really don't want that on my cover. So I'm just going to put a little bit on there, put a little bit on here. And I'm really just wanting to cover that black. I guess I can cover the whole thing. Just so that black doesn't seep out the color. See, you can see the... See, I knew that's what it was going to do. I knew it. So, that was a good idea. So, just that one. And hopefully this will seal it enough that it won't seep out onto my pretty cover I just made. So I'm going to make two of these, one for the front and one for the back. So it's going to say Scrapper Keeper on both sides, I think, so I think that'd be fun. That way, no matter which way it's sitting, I know it's my Scrapper Keeper. I'm going to put this in water real quick so that it doesn't harden. And I'm going to give this a quick dry. And be Okay, right they're off. dry. Now I'm going to, I think I'm just going to glue stick them down. And then I'm going to seal the whole thing with the Ranger Matte Multimedium so that it's good and protected. Plus, I really like the feel of the Ranger Matte Multimedium. Once it's dry, it's such a nice, it feels nice to your hand, you know? All right, I'm just going to put this on here. I'm not even sure if it's straight. But either way, that's okay. Scrapper Keeper. That is perfect. Scrapper Keeper. Because that's exactly what it is. It's the scraps you cut off. When you cut your 12 by 12 cardstock down to 8.5 by 11 and go through your printer. It's exactly what it is. It's your Scrapper Keeper. Love it. Okay, so cool with Scrapper Keeper. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same matte multimedium and I'm gonna do both sides. I'm gonna do the front and the back. I'm gonna seal them both. And I'm gonna get a palette knife and I'm just gonna use my card here to, to scrape it around. Oops, not that one. Well, I have one that's... Mm -hmm. Here we go doesn't really matter what kind of palette knife you use. <laughs> I just have one that I specifically use. I'm going to put a good amount so that I don't have to keep coming back and forth. You can do a couple coats if you want to. Um, it's totally up to you. It depends on, I guess, what, you're, what you do with yours. And I'm just, first I'm going to squish it all around. You can brush it on too. You don't have to do it this way. I like the texture that this gives. It's not really a, a brush texture, obviously, but it's um, it's it's a it's perfectly imperfect texture. <laughs> so you just want to make sure you get the whole thing covered. Oops, I might have anyway, get the rest of that up because that's quite a bit. Okay, here too. The whole piece needs to be shiny. And you don't have to use matte medium. You can use whatever medium you have that you like to 
to seal it up and it's just to make it more durable. I mean I am using um, really heavy 140 pound mixed media paper so it's going to be pretty sturdy for what it's going to be used for. Okay, I think I got it all. See, it didn't, it didn't turn too bad of a cut. You know what I mean? It's still, it's not 100% clear, clear. It got a little, picked up a little bit, but maybe that was from the printouts. Isn't this fun? I think it's so cool. It's so pretty. All right, now I'm just kind of giving it a little bit more texture. Maybe I can save that for the back side. All right, so I'm going to dry this up, or you can, you can leave it sit to dry if you want to, but I'm going to dry it and be back. Okay, so I went ahead and made two, and I also went ahead ouch, and used my bind it all and uh, already bound it into a book. So, I wanted you to see the, I don't know if you can really see, see, but I forgot to seal the black cardstock on this one, so it looks a little bit more grayish, has more of a gray tone, sort of. It's hard to see on camera, but it is, it is a little bit different. So, you forget, you do it, either way, it works. Okay, so, now I was thinking, I would do, see both covers I did the exact same way. There's the one. There's the one I just made um, on camera, and then there's the inside cover. Isn't that pretty? I swear, I think it looks so cool. I'm, I'm gonna have to use this for something else. I just like it that much. Then I thought maybe I would put a closure. This one is not completely, completely full because I still have some in this one. See how? Look at the difference, right? This one's so much prettier than this one. So I have some of my completed album stuff in here, and. I thought maybe I would put a closure because I have a feeling I'll end up putting more in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these Tim Holtz bands, elastic bands, and I'm going to use, this is just a brad with an eyelet on the stem of it. You probably can't see it very well, but you just pretty, you need to use a brad that has long prongs. There's the eyelet, and you just turn the eyelet upside down and, and put the brad through there. I've seen it on many different channels, but I believe the first time I saw it was on um, Laura Dennison's channel. I'm almost 100% positive, um, I think. So, <laughs> I'm going to mock. I'm going to mark. I'm going to try to find the center, even though my ruler isn't quite big enough. I should, probably should have done this before I bound it together. But, hey, if it's, if it's close enough, it's close enough. Maybe I'll mark it right there. And then on this side, on the back side where, the, where this thing is going to go through, I need to mark two holes. And I need to go in a little bit, I think, about half an inch maybe. So I'm going to go, they're about one inch apart. Yeah. Okay, and I think I'm going to have to actually punch a hole with my, we are memory keepers, um, chomper here. Oops. I'm going to do the small hole, just going to line it up. Line that one up. Uh, well, I got a little off, but hey, it happens. And I think, I've never used them before, so this is my first time. I think you just, yeah, stick them in like that and then pull. And it should be secure, just like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to leave that. I'm, I don't think I'm going to cover that up. Maybe one day I'll cover it up with a flower, but... For right now, I think I'm just going to leave it because I may have to, it might get too big where I might have to do something else. So then I'm going to take my contraption here, whoa, my brad with an eyelet 
in there. And I'm gonna stick it in the, oh, I haven't punched the hole. <laughs> hmm. Um, I wish I knew which video I actually saw this on the first time. You know, doing this little trick. But it was a long time ago. So then all you want to do is open up them prongs back there. Can you see that? Just open them up and press them down. Maybe put a piece of, piece of put a bit of glue or something on there. Um, let's see if it works. Oh, it does. Yay. That's so cool. I'm so excited. I'm loving me, my scrapper keeper. Awesome. I love it. Okay, so now that I got that part done, let's get on to the uh, job ticket holders. Let me show you how I did that. I'll be right back. Okay, so these are the job ticket holders that I use. They're heavy duty. I get mine at Staples. There's 10 in a pack. They're not super, super, super cheap, but if you catch them on sale. So here's what I did. I'm going to show you two different ways. Um, that I did it. The first one, I used my fuse tool. And all I do, where is my ruler? I'm using a big tall metal ruler. All I do, oh, that's the wrong one. I, have, I gave myself some guides so I didn't have to sit here and measure. Is I go down the center of the job ticket here. It may not be 100% perfectly center. And then I take my fuse tool. It's been plugged in for quite some time. Um, so it's really good and hot. And I like to come down, pull down. And you need to go slow because this is really thick plastic. And I'm using the Roly tool. Okay, let me see if I got that. I think I did. I think I did. Can you see that line there? Okay, so I went right down the center. So uh, the um, the three and a half inch by 12 inch piece goes here. And then when you cut these down smaller, I'm gonna make another pocket for them. So then you wanna turn it this way. And then you wanna go half again, but you only wanna go from that first line you just did down to the edge. So, let me do that. And then again, I'm gonna pull down and press a little bit because this is really thick plastic. Like that. So now you're thinking, no, oh, you just closed it up, but I'm gonna show you what I do. So there's that, there's that line. So when you cut this piece and you make it smaller pieces, you can stick it in this top part. Let me see if I got another piece. You can just stick it in this top part and you don't have to dig as much. See, it's the same, same size. So you stick it there. And then for your one inch pieces, you go on this bottom part that you've sectioned off and then you want to go, I don't know if you want to go in half and half. It depends on your, the way you're gonna bind it. And you don't have to use a bind at all. You can use binder rings. Uh, you can use whatever you want. So then you wanna start from that middle line there and divide this one in half. Just like that. Okay, now these two are closed off. So here's what I do. Let me move this ruler out of the way. I take my ruler and I take a craft knife and since this is such thick plastic, if you're careful, let me try to get it straight, you can, don't push too hard, but you can just cut one layer. So you don't want to go across your, um, where you fused it, you don't want to go across those lines. So then you want to, you can, I know you can see those marks. See where I just cut it? Now let's check and see if it's cut all the way through. It doesn't look like it is. So I'm gonna gently go over it again. I've got glue everywhere. Then I'm gonna check and see 
No, not yet. Aha, so now I made it through. And I'm just gonna use my, there we go. And it didn't go through to the other side. Let me show you. You can see the mark on this side, but it didn't cut through. So I'm gonna do that to this side and check it. You wanna check it every time because I have gone through on some of them. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. So now, your strips will fit in here just perfect. And then your binding will be on this side. And so with mine, oh, I wanna show you the other way I did it. When I used my sewing machine, Oh, here's my practice one. This was my first one. I had to use a heavy duty uh, needle and I just used black thread. This was my first attempt and it was all cattywonked. So then I decided to test out the different stitches and stuff. So what I ended up doing is, and cause, oh, and also the reason it was cattywonked is I just like took my ruler and took a sharp, not a sharp edge, but like a, um, a stylus or something. Let me find it. And just kind of marked the plastic so I couldn't see that as well. So the next thing I did was I used a Sharpie and marked off everywhere that I wanted to sew. And you have to go slow and it is slippery. I'm not gonna lie, you have to be careful because plastic is very slippery. And then I just sewed it. Let me find one that I sewed. So there's one that I sewed. Now as so you can see in some spots, well you probably can't see. There's a few little hiccups here and there, but not, nothing, nothing major. So if you don't have a fuse tool, you can totally sew it and it works exactly the same. So I just wanted to point that out. You can also hand sew it. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd have the patience for that. So, and then I'm just gonna take my bind it all and I'm just gonna punch through here. I'm just going to start at one end and of course you you would probably want to do a couple together um, and not just one at a time. Whoa. So you just want to go through and punch all your holes. If you have, if you don't have one of these, you can just use like a hole punch and make as many holes as you want to and use binder rings or you can use a cinch. Um, you could use whatever you have. If you're not making one from scratch, you can use a binder. You know, you can just punch the holes to fit the binder. Um, let's see, how far am I? I guess I'm going all the way up. I don't know how far I went on my thing. All right, so I've got all my holes punched. And it doesn't look like it kept held on to any of the plastic, which is awesome. So then the next thing you want to do to be able to remove them from your album is just cut a tiny slit from the outside into the hole that you just made. So basically you're just making it to where, can you see that? There you go, making it to where you can slide it back onto the rings. And you can do this if you're using binder rings as well. So this is just simple. I don't know if I need all those, but but there they are. And then all you have to do is open up your book and just slide them in. Just pop them in just like that. And it's really secure, it's surprisingly secure. You can do the same thing that you just that you do with these job tickets. You can do them to the heavy duty uh, page protectors um, and section them out if you want to. Um, I've also also used those when I've got larger pieces that I want to hang on to and then I use smaller um, things, smaller page protectors and stuff for the smaller pieces. So and then this one, look, this one was when I used my A4. I didn't even do any sort of sectioning off because you don't really have those uh, certain cut off pieces that you do when you're using a 12 by 12. And here's another page protector that has like three different, so just use what you have. So let's see, did I want to tell you anything else? Don't you just love my scrapbook keeper? I do, I do. So where is my thing? Hold on. So don't forget to go to Facebook and 
find the, I'll put a link below, but the pictures will be on Facebook of the colored flowers and the plain flowers. And double click on it and then right click on that picture and then save as is what you want to do so that you can keep it into your computer. So it should go automatically go to wherever your pictures go when you want to print them out. And then they'll print out on 8.5 by 11. Um, and then I'll probably do another video showing you what to do with the plain ones. I mean, I could have used the plain ones here, um, but I really liked these colors and I loved the, um, the soft muted brown background with these pastel colors. So thank you, um, Creative Pizzazz, for helping me name my scrapper keeper. Well, I guess that's all I have for you now. Oh, I use, these are, these are um, Zutter binder rings, the wire spiral thingies. Um, is there anything else I should tell you? I guess that's it for now. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and um, I'll get back to building my scrapbooks for my DIY ultimate, uh, my ultimate DIY <laughs> scrapbook printable. I've got three or four more to go. Four, I got four more to go. Um, but I wanted to stop and do this real quick, and I've been missing me some mixed media art journal and stuff, so. Um, let me know what you think, and if you make one of these, let me know, and don't forget to go over to Facebook and um, get your free printables, and I'll see you later. Bye.